What's up, guys? It's your girl, Jay Bell here, and I got my girl, Sam. And we're back for another episode of Ish My Psychic Says with Jay Bell and Sam. Uh, last week, we talked about the energy spectrum, and we went into a whole lot of different parts of that. Right. High vibrational, low vibrational, exactly. middle. We, we talked about all of these different subjects, mm-hmm. and so far we've gotten a lot of great fe- feedback. So this week, we decided to talk about, talk about masculine energy versus feminine energy. Right, and how people have both. People don't even realize that they sit on a spectrum of having mm. masculine and feminine at the same time. Okay. So, so let's let's first break down the difference between the two so people can really understand. Because sometimes on social media, you know, I'm on there a lot. More right. Than I should be. Uh, the way that sometimes both are portrayed are not always in the best light. Right. Well, I think gender wars are a big deal right now. Yeah. And a lot of people are having a hard time with understanding just what an energy spectrum of masculine energy and feminine because Mm -hmm. a woman could totally give off masculine energy, but that does not mean they're manly at all. Exactly. Or a masculine, a male, he could definitely give off like a feminine energy, but Mm -hmm. it does not mean he's feminine at all. Yeah, and I hate when, especially these younger women nowadays, if a guy does certain things that makes him happy or especially if he takes care of himself or, you know, he's able to relax a, bit, a little bit or show his emotion, all of a sudden they want to use the word uh, sassy on them. Yeah, or, or metro, metrosexual. Yeah, or they'll say zesty, like why are you as a man wanting to get, you know. A manicure. Or like why are you crying or something like that. And then it's like, yeah, yeah a lot of men are like, we don't have a space to share our emotions or our feelings because – We've we've made it unsafe. Not me. I'm, I'm, you I'm saying human beings. Yeah, human beings have made emotion a very unsafe culture. Yes, exactly. Like yeah. it's like you're not allowed to share you know. any type of emotion, and if you do, especially if you're a man, exactly, you're not allowed. Women, yeah. it's a given. But then it's like, why are you dramatic? Right. Why are you emotional? Mm-hmm. Why are you over the top? And with men, like you said, right? It's just no, no. Nope. They they want to be hard. Like literally. One of my guy friends said to me that he, although he has guy friends, he doesn't feel comfortable sharing his emotions or sharing anything deep with himself because they don't have that range with them to do that. So therefore, he always feels like he has to be, "Eh." and so everything that I see him do, he always seems unhappy. He always seems mad. Right. It's like his, his light. He doesn't have a light in him. It's because he can't be his authentic self and Mm -hmm. a lot you you will see it more in masculine, like in men, mm-hmm. that they are not allowed to have their authenticity, right. especially amongst their peers mm-hmm. or their colleagues. So they feel like they have to mask more than women do, where with women it's a given, where we are in the status quo of emotional creatures. <laughs> right, and especially when it comes to that time of the month, it's like... Oh, God, don't get me started on that. <laughs> Don't get me started with Shark Week. Right? Like, it's a really, really bad thing. But, like, with masculine energy and feminine energy, I think people need to stop seeing it as a a negative. Right. Or even using it as a weapon. Because I see a lot of times it's weaponized. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Yeah. So continue your conversation about it a little bit. Yeah. So in spirituality or holistic beliefs, it's commonly thought that human beings possess both masculine (laughs) and feminine energies, regardless of their gender identity. Right. These energies are often referred to as the yin and yang of a person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the yin and yang, it is the darkness and the light, and it is the balance. It's equilibrium. And when we're talking about energy on a spectrum, we can have high vibrational, low vibrational, or in the middle, which is accepting of both. It's another yin yang. So masculine and feminine energy is kind of on that same spectrum Mm -hmm. where you could be more in the emotional feminine energy or you could be more in the masculine tough energy right but we're going to talk about that so in masculine energy it's associated with the quality such as strength and logic logic masculine energy is associated fully with the logic mind mm-hmm. um, action assertiveness and analytical thinking so people that possess more of an analytical or a logical mindset are kind of looked at more as a masculine energy because masculine is represented by the sun. The sun is heat, right? Yeah. Whereas yeah. feminine energy is associated with qualities such as the intuition and nurturing and receptivity, creativity, emotional intelligence. And it's considered inward focus associated with the moon, the water, and the left side of the body. 
So with masculine energy, it's more right-sided. With feminine energy, it's left-sided. Okay. And so you say that people can have both. Yes. How does that look? So, so I, when, let's, let's, let's bring it down. Yeah. All right. You meet a woman, and you see her just taking life by the horns, right? Mm-hmm. Taking the bull by the horns. She's powerful. She's top in her career. Mm-hmm. She's assertive. She's a little bit demanding, but it's not in a negative way. Right. It's more of, I know what I want, when I want it, and I'm going to get it. But on the negative spectrum, that's, that's her being only in masculine energy. Because if you look at a woman like that, yeah. does she take care of herself? Does she nurture herself? Does she allow herself to cry? And probably nine times out of ten, no. She probably has so much going on in that logical side of her masculine energy that right. she doesn't even know how to be feminine in that energy, mm-hmm. which is being in the moment and feeling those feelings. It's go, go, go. It's not stop and smell the roses. Right. So a lot of women in 2024 have associated with having massive masculine energy because they have to take care of everything. They have to take care of the house, the kids, they have to have a full career, have to pay all the bills, have to make all of the moves. Right. Whereas they don't have a partnership or a counterpart that will give and take the same energy to put them both in balance. I feel like, and I, I agree with you on that, so many women are be, are scared to get married or be with anybody because men, a lot of men that I have seen now, you know, when you look past social media and stuff, this is not always real, but the way it's described is though a lot of men expect women to do all those things and still please them. On the other hand, they're in their mind, they shouldn't have to do nothing because they pay the bills in the house. Some of them. And some of them don't even pay bills. Some of them just sit on the couch. Right. Exactly. You know, they're just ornaments in the house. Right. Exactly. They just literally just sit there and expect. You, you know, what's funny to me. And hopefully I don't get in trouble for this. But um, when I stayed with my uncle in Phoenix, before I saw what their marriage was about, I used to look to my uncle and his wife as, you know, relationship goals. Like they, they were, they're the only couple that's been married for consistently for a long time. And so then when I actually moved in, I saw his wife, I don't call her my aunt anymore, and that's a whole other subject. Um, Right, well, you have trauma there. Yeah. I saw how she did everything. And he just sat back. And he just sat back and watched her do everything. But yet he would judge me on how I was living my life. Right. You know, and I was just like, how can you say that when you don't even help your wife with the basics? But that's the thing. People that have toxic energy or negative energy will always throw the stone at something that they don't like because it exists within them. Mm. We are bothered by what we do. Right. And so we can always see it outwardly. We can't see it inwardly. That's masculine and feminine energy. Inwardly is someone who is more self-conscious, emotional. Mm -hmm. There's someone who is like, well, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And I just want to make sure everybody's okay. And the mediator. Yeah. And the masculine energy is like, I'm going to speak my mind and I'm going to talk before I think. Mm -hmm. And the feminine energy is like, you know what? I'm going to think about what I'm about to say. And I don't think I, I personally, I don't think I've made it there yet. (laughs) I, well, I mean, there's no one's better than anybody, right? right? We're all in this plane learning life lessons and trying to figure out what our next move for ourselves is. And we spend a lot of time looking over at everybody else's life and wondering, well, why can't I have that? Or when am I going to have that? Instead of focusing on, okay, what do I not, what, what do I got to fix? What do I got to take care of in this mm-hmm. moment with my own energy? Am I more in the masculine? Am I more in the feminine? Or am I in the middle? When you see people that are in the middle mm-hmm. of that energetic spectrum of masculine and feminine, right. they are very go-getting, but they're also receptive. Mm-hmm. They are the listeners. They yeah. are the observers. They are the people who will sit back and say, okay, I see that you're upset, but I'm not going to get upset with you. Mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear you. I'm going to hear your point. I'm going to tell you how I feel. And then I'm going to move on with my life. Because someone who's balanced is someone who sees all sides of it, even their own. I, and, you know, I admire my best friend, um, Keisha, for that. She has grown so much from her marriage. I, and Because I, there was a big part that I saw. She was trying to have that feminine energy within her marriage. But a big part of it was masculine because she had to take care of so much within that. And she had to be a people pleaser and she had to make sure her husband was good because, you know, at the end of the day, he's he was insecure with himself for many reasons that I'm not going to break down. But I see that in her. And then I'd be like, 
uh is that what marriage is all about or just being a human being in your late 30s as a wo- as a woman too you know trying to balance that masculine versus feminine energy out like for right. me i feel like i'm still in my masculine energy s- space well that could also be that you're a leo in the sun sign sun is associated with masculine energy yeah i, I stay in that space cuz mm-hmm. i'm i'm not comfortable letting people handle things for me right i've done that before and it always has excuse my language shit on me (laughs) well if if, we don't even have to do that in order to find balance i think the biggest misconcept about this is there's a trend going on that's like oh i want to find a man who's going to put me in my feminine space Mm -hmm. that's a trend that's not reality because you're in charge of yourself you're in charge of your own emotions your soul and your body are soulmates. Your mm-hmm. soul found a mate within your body. So you are your first soulmate. You will have many, and this is the next topic for right. next week is like soulmate connections. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yes. But, you know, it, it goes in hand in hand with energy spectrum, then masculine, feminine energy, and then the whole soulmate situation. We have a lot of misunderstanding towards, well, how do I get into my feminine energy or how do I get out of my masculine energy? Right. And the answer is, is that you have to recognize where you're at on that spectrum. Yeah. And you have to recognize when did this start? How did it start? Was I raised by a mom who was in her masculine era and now I just took up and went on with it? Because a lot of times that happens too. We end up watching our parents do certain things or take care of certain things. And then we grow up thinking, oh, well, they did it. So I have to do that too. Right. So it goes, it goes deeper than just what people think. It can go all the way back to our first topic of shadow work, yeah. where if we're recognizing, like we're recognizing a lot of like relationship patterns, behavior patterns, then we're starting to realize where we stand on any energy spectrum. And mm. every single human being has the ability to work deeper within themselves. And people don't want to do that, though. Because was, they don't understand it. Right, exactly. And I, I had a comment about that whole thing, and I forgot. So we'll, we'll, we'll come back around to it. But... Um, Oh, that's what I was going to say. I, I feel like a big part of what you're saying about the masculine and feminine energy and being, you know, raised by a single mom or whatever like that, I feel like my situation is different because I was raised by a single dad. And I think that's a big part of my masculine energy, too. Exactly. Because I saw my dad do everything right. by himself. You know, he didn't rely on anyone to do that. And as much as he'd be wanting me to rely on him, I feel uncomfortable doing that. So that still puts me in my masculine energy. And so I do... I mean, I hate to say it, it is a trend. I'm a part of that trend. I would like to meet a man that puts me in my feminine energy. I literally was coming to work and I was like, I want a man that's going to take care of me. Let me tell you how you get that. Ah. Okay. So it's very common for kids who are raised by a single parent. It doesn't matter if it's masculine or feminine. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's your mom or your dad. Um, It's very common for those kids to grow up masculine energy because Mm. they were raised by one parent doing the whole thing. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm, okay. Very common. Yeah. The the concept that they have on social media of, oh, I just want to find someone to put me in my feminine era. Um, you guys fight them with your fists because how are you going to have another masculine energy come and test your masculine energy? So what you attract is you end up attracting feminine energy because it's the magnet, right? Yeah. So the negative, the positive, the high versus the low, the the gray, the white, the black, all of that, that all spectrum comes into play with that is if you are in your masculine era, yeah. you are going to attract feminine era men Ugh. that are emotional, needy. They don't really want to do very much for you. They, they're they so dependent on you. And that happens. It can happen. Just like a boy could be raised by a single mom who maybe she needed her family or she never really branched off on her own. She kind of continued to live with her family. She was in the nurturer. She was probably a great mom. Yeah. But then they end up being very much in their feminine energy because they never really understood how to be in that masculine era. Mm. Right? So yeah. it's it just depends on the situation, the background. The reason that you can't find a man to do that for you is because your masculine energy outweighs it. Mm. masculine and masculine energy, they just collide. Feminine and feminine energy, they just collide. You have to have the balance, the scale. Would that explain how, like, I'm, I'm asking a question. So does that explain, because <laughs> I know you're going to roll your eyes at me, my ex lying on. on me, calling me a narcissist, saying that all these bad things about me? 
I mean, that's toxic behavior based off of him trying to probably salvage his own reputation. But that's honestly, that could be considered him being in feminine energy. Because they always say that when it's masculine energy, it doesn't have time for any of the drama. And emotion can be considered drama. And so there's positive masculinity and there's toxic masculinity. We've seen that in men. Yes. There is positive femininity and negative. We've seen that in women. Yes. And so that also comes into play on that spectrum Mm -hmm. where you could be in your positive masculine era and you're just like, I got stuff to do. I want someone to build with. I want someone to grow with. So your challenge in life is to master your feminine energy so that you can attract that while maintaining and being able to be in that equilibrium with yourself so that you stop attracting the opposite. Ooh, that's a breakdown. I know. I need you to break down the positive negative. So the positive masculinity is the man who he is hardworking. He is out there, assertive, leader, protector, and the, the toxic masculinity is the manipulator, the one who kind of has the narcissistic tendencies. Mm-hmm. I know that that term is used a lot. Yeah, it's, it's overused. Over, it's overused. overused. But overused. when you're looking at toxic masculinity, it that's where narcissism is strung from is toxic masculinity mm. because it's a masculine energy because it's It's in the logic, it's in the analytical, and it's in that brainwave where you can't, you can't see this emotional person who is overly emotional and say, oh, well, they're going to, they're going to master manipulate an energy. What they're going to do is they're going to emotionally manipulate. Right. (laughs) So they're two different spectrums. Okay. So then in positive femininity, we look at someone who is very patient and caregiving and conscious Mm -hmm. and self-assertive, just very mom, very motherly, very homely, very comfortable. You just feel at peace when you're next to this woman and you know it's because she don't need you and you don't need her. Right. She just makes you feel welcomed. Yeah. The positive masculinity makes you feel safe. It makes you feel validated and heard. And so those are positive aspects of it. And then we look at the negative, the negative masculinity is controlling, stubborn, um, someone who's going to manipulate your mind, someone who's going to spread rumors or talk about you behind your back Mm. because it's more out of an ego, right? Masculine energy is ego. Then we look at feminine energy and it's considered more spiritual. So in the positive, she's very motherly, very accepting, rewarding, like the, the cheerleader, the caregiver, Mm -hmm. the negative femininity is someone who is emotionally manipulative, someone who is irrational all over the place. Yeah. Definitely will not be on your side. They will make everything the martyr. Yeah. So you'll see that martyrship. Okay. Um, It's very opposite. So when we look at the spectrum of, okay, here we have this positive side of that, and then we have that negative side of it, Mm -hmm. there's healing to do. And we don't have to stay in an unhealed mentality. None of us do. We choose to stay in what makes us comfortable because we know no better. Right. That that is true. And that comes with relationships, careers, just life in general. So I don't like I look at people in various ways, in various tones. And I I know that there are bad people out there. I know that there are good people out there. But I know that people have a conscious decision every day to either make a change or not. Mm hmm. You know, we're creating our own reality. Right. We're writing our own story. Yeah. And how we write it is how we live it. You got to make a choice to to do that work and, and, right. and really, we all could be better people. Right. Like you said, nobody is better than anybody nope. else. We have our faults. We're human. That's how we were made. I'm not going to put God into it, but that's how we were made. Right. And it all, I think it, a lot, a big part of that too, it stems from the environment you come from. Right. Precisely. You know, exactly. So if you come from a, I say like a toxic environment. Then you have some of those tones within your energy. Exactly. And if you come from a loving environment, it's the same thing. It's a way of finding balance. Right. And I was, I was talking about it earlier to my dad. I, was, I told him that it's really interesting that one person, one person can have these issues and they have kids. Like let's, let's make an example. Like you have one parent and that parent is an alcoholic, that person, they struggle with addiction. Mm -hmm. They ended up having three kids. Mm -hmm. One out of those three kids is going to have that same raging addiction. Mm -hmm. It just, it's a part of just that energy that's involved with genetics, DNA, 
the way that they were brought up, what they were around, coping mechanisms. Right. And so we look at people and we have to take a step back and not be so quick to judge them. Mm -hmm. We have to say, you know what? I wonder what their childhood was like. And then in dating, it's hard because we don't really ask questions not we just days. we just go into things so blindly. That's why they always say love is blind. Yeah. Because we go in so blindly. We go in feeling all of those hormones, the love hormone, you know, <laughs> the dopamine. Yes. We, we're all doped up on that dopamine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we feel some type of way about them based off of our own perception of them mm -hmm. rather than the truth behind who they really are or what their energy is telling us. Right. And it could either be in this masculine energy of positivity or this negative masculinity or in the middle. There's a lot of people who have found that balance where they understand their masculine side and they understand their feminine side and they stay in the middle where they're at peace with themselves. Mm -hmm. And these people, they're not worried about being with you, with them, with anyone. They're in their own space. Right. Because they found that they stopped searching. Mm -hmm. Most of our search is for something that's missing within us. Yeah. And we seek that in partnerships. Because we all want to be loved by someone besides our family and friends. You know, there's a right. difference in parental love, friendship love, and then there's romantic love. Right. And you want someone that has that balance within them that's able to love you properly. Exactly. And it's not bad that people seek it. It's not a bad thing. I mean, who doesn't? Right. We all want love in we our life. We all seek it. Right. But we don't do the work in order to be ready for it. Mm. And that's, that's where that's where the masculine feminine energy comes in is if you're not doing the work to be your best self, mm -hmm. how are you going to attract anything better? There's a lot of people that need some work, including myself. I, I will say we that. all need work. Yeah, we all need work. <laughs> we all need to work on ourselves. So, you know, what are some of the the things that we can do to find that balance, you know, that doesn't necessarily involve going to a therapist because uh, therapy is expensive. You yeah. Know? Well, I mean, people need to figure out meditation. I think people get scared of the word meditation because yeah. they think that it's sitting in a room with the lights off with incense burning and some monk chanting on the mountain. Yes. <laughs> And they're like, how am I at peace when that guy hasn't moved for seven business days and I can't even sit here for five seconds? Um, you have to understand what meditation is. Mm -hmm. Meditation is clearing your thoughts. Yeah. And whatever clears your thoughts is your form of meditation. We have a lot of active people out there that are like, I can't sit still. They can't even sit through a movie without folding laundry, going and doing the dishes. I got stuff to do. I got stuff to do. I got catching up. So they have to understand that if that's their form of meditation is cleaning stuff or organizing stuff, making making art, doing arts and crafts, being creative. Those are other forms of meditation. Mm -hmm. And finding out what form of meditation works best for you to clear your mind, to put you in a space where you're not thinking of anything. You're yeah. just in the zone, right. right? Listening to loud music, going for a drive, going to nature, hanging out in nature. Mm -hmm. You do not have to sit in a room and listen to monk music and hope for the best. This works for people that have ADD or ADHD yeah. like myself. Right. <laughs> so you need to change your mind about meditation and stop thinking that it's wrapped around just isolation, isolation and quiet and not being able to move because a lot of you guys will come to me and say, well, how come every time I meditate, I pass out? I'm like, cause your soul's exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we need surgery in order to recover. And sometimes we need that sleep. Yeah. Next, another thing that you can do is you can practice energy work. You can be more aware of your energy. Mm -hmm. You can sit with yourself and you can say, what are the reasons that I am in my masculine era? What is causing me to feel like I have to do X, Y, and Z and all of the above? Right. When, when do I ever give myself time and energy to be in the feminine energy of giving myself that nurturing love, that receptivity? Like when? When do I do it? Do I do it? Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing it, then you have to start putting it in your space of, I have to start practicing self-care. Gotcha. I mean, you can go, go get a massage, go get, go, go get a pedicure, go do something that's more nurturing to you or rewarding toward yourself. And that's like, that's feminine energy. Another thing that you can do is you can go to yoga. You can stretch out some of that, I guess, frustration in your body. Mm. And mindfulness is so important because you have to connect with yourself so being mindful of how you're treating yourself and cultivating that harm, harmonious relationship between the aspects of 
harboring masculine and feminine energy where it's accepting, yes, I am in my masculine era and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. But when am I going to make time for this feminine energy that's within me too? Yeah. When, when do I give myself time to grieve and cry and be remorseful and feel in the moment and embrace myself and full-blown love myself? And you learned that lesson this last year because you had to go through a whole self-love journey and it was ugly. Oh, super ugly. I mean, if people were really paying attention and watching, I looked a hot mess on purpose because I just did not care. I was down in the dumps. When I say, and I, I, part of it was the last situation I was in, but part of it was the job that I was in, the situation that I was living in, um, a station that I was working at, having to deal with the same crap that I have had to deal with with every market that I have gone into. And I'm not going to go into it because when you're in this industry, you can't really talk about that stuff. Right. You know, like a lot of that can... and. It can affect your mental health. Oh, yeah. And it affected mine really, really bad. It, it was it was a domino effect, as we talked about before. Right. You know, all the things that I had going on. But, I mean, I can't lie. Like, I have some of my feminine energy coming back, but a big part of me is still masculine energy because, you know, I don't feel comfortable enough yet to relax. Fun fact. Women who are struggling in their masculine era have fertility issues. They also have every issue you could think of in their sacral chakra, which is ovarian area. Oh, my God. So ovaries, uterus, they they have a lot of blockages or it's shut off or their chakra is low vibrational because it's not activating in a feminine way, especially if you're feminine. Wow. That is something to know, especially since eventually, I, I mean, not eventually, I want kids. Right. Think about all of your friends who are in their masculine era and how hard it was for them to conceive. The issues that they had with reproductive health. Well, I've only, I, I'm, I think I it's one, limitless for the people that I've dealt with. Yeah, I have one good friend and she definitely had issues um, getting pregnant, which I mean, honestly, when you, when I think about it now, it's probably a good thing that she didn't have a child with this with this guy i mean yeah energy talks to you in those ways too yeah. like some people you're just not meant to have children with and i think about that and i think about that with uh oh, daddy I, I love him i have to tie in celebrity talk i think about that with chloe kardashian when yeah. she was married to lamar odom yeah and they she tried just to get pregnant could and not she conceive because she wasn't supposed to <clears throat> exactly because of what was going on with but money is money and those sisters paid for any which way to have children. Right, because they really wanted it, but when she tried to conceive naturally, it was not happening because exactly. she wasn't supposed to. Yeah, and it's so. a good thing she didn't. Yeah, because of what, what was going on with him. But then she ended up getting uh, she Lamar 2.0. Well, oh, my God. I don't <laughs> even, Tristan, woo, I, you know, I hate it for her, for Chloe, because of the fact that, I mean, obviously, we don't know everything about her. We don't. We're That's not the only her. sister I actually like. Honestly. Right, exactly. And we don't know her everyday life. We don't know what's going on within her. We don't know all the details of what happened between her and Tristan. But I hate that she went through this dirty ass relationship with someone that portrayed themselves as someone she could have kids with and be calm with when the whole time everything was showing about him pre like previous to right. her being with him. But I guess she thought he could change. And that's something that a lot of us women go through in a lot of our situations in life. You know, like we we want to let down our guard and start to be, have that feminine energy in a way with someone that we really think that we can have a future with, that we love at that time and do all these things. But then when they start to show their true colors, I feel like that masculine part comes in. It like builds itself up so that you can have that wall. So when you're ready to let go and walk away. I agree it's not as hard. I agree. Because it's like when a woman is done, she's done. Well, they always say that her mind leaves before her body. Exactly. And that's I think that's the one thing that I I will commend all of the Kardashian sisters for, honestly. Even Kim, you know, with the Kanye situation. When it got so bad to the point she just couldn't deal with it anymore, she yeah, left. He has a lot of mental health and, you know, he'll eventually get some help. I mean, I don't think the man has ever grieved his mom. And I said that, I've said that. Nobody listened to me. I was like, when his mom passed away... That was heartbreaking for him. Exactly. He never fully recovered because no. he never took the he time. He just went back on tour. He went yeah. worked. And I think it... When you become a parent and you realize that you don't have that 
like your kids won't have that grandparent. Mm-hmm. The kids won't be able to know your parent. Right. I think I think people are really hard on him. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he means well. And I definitely feel like what you guys have seen with Kanye is a grief cycle. Yeah. And I I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. I feel like he's been on a very long grieving journey. Right. And when he's ready to actually think for himself and say, hey, I really do need to get help. It'll be a beautiful journey for him. And I honestly think Kim did try to help him. Yeah, I do. I don't I don't think she's all that bad. I don't think that family's all that bad. I think that a lot of the things that we see are just what the media wants us to see. Exactly. And people want and the us fact, to feel bad about or look at them badly when they're not. Yeah. They the, seem like a very tight knit together yeah. family. I mean, they have their issues, obviously. Right. But, but she's tried really hard to break out of what she became famous for. Right. And and you you have to understand that when you're in your twenties, <laughs> it's like, okay, cool, yeah, go ahead and leak that. That's fine. Okay. Right. But then when you become 30, 40, you look back and you're like, why did I do it? So we don't know how embarrassed she is. We don't know what she's experienced or what she's gone through. She's always forever known as that. And so it's really been hard for her to paint a different image. Because people want people I think people still want to humble her humble her and make her feel like the only reason why you're famous right. is because of this. Not mm-hmm. because of the hard work she's tried to put in to get past that. Right. I mean, this woman right now is like literally going to law school. Right. She's trying to help felons get another um, view. Like, yeah. Another life help or anything like that. Mm-hmm. She runs multiple businesses. And now she's like starting to become an actress. There is an example of masculine era. Kim is the perfect example because her dad passed away yeah. and she never processed it and mm-hmm. she got thrown in her masculine era because the mom's fight or flight response mm-hmm. um, what's the mom's name I forget uh, Chris Jenner yeah Chris Chris Chris's yeah. fight or flight response was okay my husband passed I have to take care of everything and Kim felt responsible for jumping in her dad's space right in her dad's shoes Mm -hmm. and people will look at kardashians and say oh i just don't like them or whatever but like we have to stop looking at people up in that social media and say oh this is the story because media is telling me this like they have their problems too yeah i mean and and honestly like you can look at any of like we did this last week and you were like okay i'm gonna tell you celebrity we're gonna think which spectrum they are kim is 100 percent in masculine energy yeah. Kanye is 100% in his feminine energy right now. And that's because of grief. Yeah. And and his mental health and him trying to fix and nurture himself, you know, he was on top of the game and that's exhausting to maintain. Yeah. The fact that he maintained what he maintained for, for so, so long, long yeah. was pretty impressive, but any person, any human being is going to break at some point. Mm-hmm. And because he didn't grieve and because he didn't go through that process, we don't know the extent of his grief and we right. don't know exactly what he goes through with his mental health. Mm-hmm. But definitely him being out of public yeah. is because of his mental health. I, I That makes a lot of sense. And I've, I've seen like lately, even though he dresses ridiculously sometimes, he's covered himself up a lot um, while his wife is out there butt-ass naked. I I do see him quieting down a little bit versus all those antics he had going on for the past, we'll say like five years, basically, you know. That was a stress cycle. Right, exactly. And now he's starting to quiet down a little bit. And I see that happening. Um, I know people are never going to forgive him for the things that he has said. Well, yeah, but I think that he said those things out of his grief, not because he was cognitively at his best. But you got to think about the world today, Yeah, you know. I mean, I'm not going to say anything about cancel culture because that's not real. But when people see that, they don't really want to forgive and understand. They think just because it's been what almost it's been over 10 years since his mom passed away that he should have grieved and moved on. They want to blame it on the Kardashians and say that Kim is at fault for how Kanye has been acting. Well, they want to blame the Kardashians for every person who's come in and out of their life. Mm -hmm. But we don't know the full story. Exactly. Do you want to talk about other um celebrities and we can talk about if they're in the masculine or feminine you can hit me with a few examples and we can discuss why they're in that spectrum okay well let's talk about oh well we talked about ben affleck and jennifer lopez last week we talked about jennifer gardner taylor swift taylor swift i would say is someone who she's in both because she's very feminine in various ways Mm -hmm. where she is very caring and nurturing and centered right and then she's very driven and runs her own thing Mm -hmm. and takes it takes the bull by the horns and rides it to her stage (laughs) 
I think that she tries really hard because she did really have somewhat of a private life. Yeah. And only whoever she's dated has always had like this, oh my God, she's writing this song about this guy or this guy or that guy. And I mean, it is what it is, but I think she's in the middle. I think she can go from each extreme. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, Who else has been like a bunch of mess? Let's talk about Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish... I would say she is more in the feminine energy. Really? Because it, cause it's, she came out recently. Well, I mean, that she was... comfortable in her skin. That was a given. Okay. That was just something hovering over her. But because someone comes out and they are the opposing... They're, they're with the same sex or they are opposing their own sex or their own gender, it doesn't necessarily mean that they radiate that energy. I think that she is very receptive to her, her emotions. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she was trying to force herself in her masculine energy was right. why she had so many issues. Mm-hmm. I think if you think about the way she sings, it's very soft. Yeah. It's very light. It's mm-hmm. very femme. Right. So it's an energy that comes from her heart space. Mm-hmm. I think that if people are around her, they definitely see her as someone who will cry on frustration, cry out of anger, right. be more in that energy of recluse. Okay. So she's totally femme energy. Well, she so- has she has masculine tones, but she has femme energy. Okay. Well, when you talk about a recluse, Justin Bieber, because, I mean, he hasn't released any new music. I mean, he's enjoying. I, he has a lot of issues going on. Aren't they having a baby? Yes. That's what I'm saying. He's in his feminine energy. And I think that that's because he was brought up by a really good woman. And that woman was always embracing the feminine feminine side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you look at his coupling, if you look (laughs) at what he's dealing with in energy, the reason it didn't work out with Selena Gomez is because they were both feminine. They were both in their feminine energy. Really? And if you look at his current wife, she is masculine energy. She Mm. is someone who is assertive and will stand in the way and probably stand in the way of any type of harm coming at him right. and protective. Uh-huh. And she she just exudes masculine energy where he exudes feminine. Wow. The reason it didn't work out with Selena is because Selena is like the moon. So she has depth. She has this emotional magnet to her. Mm-hmm. And two emotional magnets, they drown each other. Oh. Will Smith. He's very masculine energy, but I think that he, I I don't feel like he dabbles in his feminine energy too often, but I think around his wife, he does because his wife is masculine energy too. Mm. So they're both masculine energies, but they work, but do they, (laughs) because it doesn't really, it feels like for media, they show face, but I just feel like they live very separate lives and there's a lot of them away from each other than there is together. And I feel that because Jada is so masculine, I think that she has things the way that they, she thinks suits them best. And I think Will has learned over the years to just kind of go with that. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I see him more in the masculine energy where he knows what he wants. He goes after what he wants. He probably has been in the media like in years of like people thinking he was so selfish because he would just go get what he wants. Yeah. Masculine energy. Is that a compliment? So when we talk about for, personally, I, I'm I'm glad he slapped Chris Rock. But when that happened, that Oscar slap, was that like at the the epitome of his masculine energy dealing with Jada? Or I think he was frustrated with how the media was acting. And again, we're not involved yeah. in what's going on. We just hearsay. Yeah. We just know the the telephone, the tabloids. The tabloids say this and the tabloids say that. So we don't really know all of the detail of what happened mm-hmm. or what was really going on. But he had sat back in his masculine energy of trying to hold back for so long and be receptive. And then she pushed him into that feminine energy through that situation because he felt like, did I really push my life to this because I was working hard and I was gone and I was doing this and I was doing that? Like, did I really push my wife away? Mm-hmm. Is it my fault? And that was him being in that feminine energy for a little while mm-hmm. because of what he was about to risk or lose. Mm-hmm. But he definitely is a masculine energy because look at his career, look at the way that he holds himself, look at the positions in acting he carries. It's all masculine energy. Wow. The way you just broke that down makes a lot of sense 
on so how their whole relationship has looked at. When that happened, yeah. he was pushed into the feminine energy when all of that came out. And uh, Chris Rock got the best of him during the... He's not an, he's not a femme energy, so look what happened. Yeah. When he got pushed into the emotion, mm -hmm. he lost self-control. Mm -hmm. But when he goes back into the masculine energy, he seems on top of his game. He feels very right. confident. He's, he's a person who exudes confidence. And that's why he's kind of like... Because I, I understand when, when that slap happened, he shut down. A lot of projects got shut down, mm -hmm. all this other stuff. But now... It's like he's going full throttle again. Because he's back in that masculine energy. Mm -hmm. He's done some healing. Okay. He's accepted that, you know, his wife is in her masculine era, mm -hmm. but it has nothing to do with him. He was not a partner to push her in her masculine. She decided to be in her masculine because she had a rough upbringing. Mm -hmm. So she's always going to be kind she's, of like, mm -hmm. and he's just. And, and I feel very much like he is. So he, they are the perfect example of positive, negative masculinity. Mm -hmm. So with Will Smith, you're seeing the positive masculinity yeah. where he kind of is self-composed. He's just kind of within himself. He can seem a bit like um, conceited or arrogant, but he's just very uh, determined and strong with what he wants. Right. And then with Jada, you're going to see that toxic masculinity because it's unhealed trauma. It's not because she wants to be that way. It's because she knew no better and she's gone through a lot of experiences in her childhood and her past that pushed her into that mm. so it's the positive masculinity versus the toxic masculinity and that's why people think that jade is messy mm. okay we'll do two more ourselves starting with you oh good lord <laughs> i'm in i'm in the middle okay. because i can be super in my feminine energy but it took me a long time to get there i tell mm. you what I have lived most of my life in my masculine energy mm -hmm. and only recently in the last year or so I've learned how to get into my feminine energy. Wow. And it was because I, I had to take care of three kids by myself. Yeah. I had to do so much on my own. And then I started to notice like people that I attract and things that I do and relationships and friendships and things that were around me. I was like, oh my God, I'm in this like mass, like masculine energy and I need to like start nurturing and self-caring. So then I started removing myself and then I met someone and that person made it so easy to be in my feminine energy. Mm. Like my partner, he yeah. makes it so easy. I can tell the difference in you from when I first met you until like yeah. now. Up because he recently. throws me in that feminine energy and it's refreshing. <laughs> Can't wait for that day. Okay. I, go ahead. Just. Just Lay it on you. Lay it on you. Yeah, just tell me. So when I first met you, you were very much on the borderline of positive masculinity and toxic masculinity because you had just got out of breakup. You were dealing with a huge transition. You moved here. There was a lot of hurt in your space, mm -hmm. but there was nothing toxic about you. It mm. was just the energy you were giving off was very, leave me alone. Don't talk to me. But then putting on the mask of, I got to be this personality. It was exhausting for you. Now, you're very much getting closer to that balance because you've accepted and you've released so much. So you're, you're getting into that middle of, yes, you will always be dominated by your positive masculinity, mm -hmm. but now you're embracing this feminine side because you're embracing parts of yourself that you were uncomfortable with before. Mm. Like you already... Look at you. You haven't been in relationships. You you don't even pursue things. You've been really on yourself and that's healing. You've done a lot of work. So you're getting closer and closer to that middle spectrum of allowing yourself to feel okay to be in that middle where you can bounce back and forth. Yeah, because like I was just talking to my mom about this yesterday, I believe. I finally have gotten to a place where like I'm okay with being single. And that's balance. Yeah, like I, I, I'm totally fine with it. It comes with peace. It comes with not dealing with BS, you know, because I, I do want to, I mean, obviously, I, if I'm in that masculine space, I don't need another masculine energy with me. Exactly. But at the same time, I, I feel like that's what I attract a lot of. And then that masculinity, uh, that masculine energy, that space, it's very toxic because usually that person is not doing their healing work. Correct. So, yeah. And I think that going from the extreme of your heartbreaks mm -hmm. and then your self-awareness brought you away from 
all a lot of that masculine energy and the only toxic masculinity that was around you was because you carried a lot of your ex's energy with you and then you finally like released and then it was all gone Mm. and so you're always going to be more in the masculine which is fine because you're always going to be someone who takes charge and get things done but I think now you're starting to kind of dabble into this nurturer side of yourself Mm -hmm. where you're like wanting to embrace that feminine side Mm -hmm. because of taking care of yourself looking pretty and doing these things where for a minute there you're like I don't even care and that's more masculine and then in feminine it's like yeah I want to do this and I, I feel good with that and I'm embracing this side of me where probably before it was like you'd probably fight yourself to even cry and now you're okay with it so that's healing that's all healing work so you're on the middle spectrum Mm -hmm. closer to the masculine energy though but you had to remove a lot of that toxic from your past like other people yeah because it was more other people like i've said that's i've said this to you before i tend to attract people that are just downright toxic broken yeah unhealed they expect me to do everything for them because they're attracted to that light of that masculine energy of assertiveness right exactly and then when i you know don't want to do that for them all of a sudden i'm the bad guy yeah and that gets exhausting that gets tiring i think a lot of women listening to this and men will probably say you know what i need to pay attention of where i'm at yeah definitely and i think as you get older you definitely start to do that because you know, just like the generation before us, our parents, when you get to a certain age in life, you just don't give a shit no more. You know, like you just want to do what makes you happy. Right. Correct. You don't want to bring all that extra baggage or whatever. And I feel like over the years I have done that. And so when I am by myself, I am okay. And that includes being in a relationship. Like I do want one, but I don't, I definitely don't want to deal with any more men that are unhealed or just downright disgusting or nasty, you know, and how they approach women. And so, yeah, that's, that's my whole thing. You see how like she has all that light on her side guys. And I got all the dark, I got a dark aura right now. I got to work on that anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. We have to go now guys. If you have any comments, uh, you have a topic topic you want us to talk about or anything like that. Hit me up in my DMs at the J Bell Show. T H E J B E L L E Show. Hit us up. Uh, we'll have a new episode next week. We're talking about soulmates, right, Sam? Yes, ma'am. We're going to talk about what is the trend of soulmates. Mm-hmm. Let's break down what a soulmate even is, mm-hmm. how to achieve your soulmate connection. And then I'm going to ask her how to help me find my soulmate. Right. If I'm I have to bring one. a crystal ball and I'm going to... Bring, <laughs> bring your crystal ball next time. <laughs> no, for real. Bring your crystal ball so people can see. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Peace out.